Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Um, this is the first in a set of six series, I guess. Um, the same set syndrome. There are several of us. We are supporting small businesses and we are all using the same set or uh, a set by the same company each month. Uh, videos are all going to go live on the 30th, so June, July, August, September, October, and November. Uh, the order is always going to be the same, and there's always a prize. Uh, so, um, I guess buckle in, and we're going to go for a ride. I am going to do something that I never, well, I won't say never, because I've been doing it more, but I'm going to make an interactive card. I don't do them very often. <clears throat> One nice thing about digital images is that you can print them on anything. This is uh, a little wine by Joy Claire Designs, and it's got a bunch of images in it, but I just manipulated them in my Silhouette software so that I could make this little scene with this <laughs> funny looking little cat and give him a sentiment and some bubbles and his wine glass. And I printed him on some Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock, but I also printed him in the same or uh, configuration on some acetate. Uh, so I set that aside and I'm going to go ahead and color. I did leave the coloring in the video because um, although this video is pretty much about the interactive card, I really wanted to show off this image because I think it's absolutely adorable. Uh, this cat just says it all. But when I was coloring this, I also want to point out that I don't come up with the inspiration on my own a lot of times. might have an idea, but as far as, you know, bits and pieces of my cards, I really reach out to my friends and I appreciate them in a way that I could never really express fully. But I had been chatting with my friend Marie. Uh, she has a blog called Another Card Making Blog, like the best name for a card making blog ever. Um, anyway, I was chatting with her and I said, if you were a cat that was drinking wine, what color would you be? <laughs> I mean... Only a crafty friend would send you a message like that, right? So anyway, she was with her husband at the time, and they were doing a running errands or whatever they were doing. And he said um, either orange or gray, and she said either orange or gray. So the colors were orange and gray. So I decided that we could combine them and make an orange and gray cat. So I did color him in the orange colors uh, completely, except for his belly and his eyelids, because I wasn't sure what I was what I was gonna do there. And then where I wanted to put in the the dark gray or the black stripes, I decided that I would kind of I would say pencil them in with the lightest color. I just kind of sketched them, and I knew I could blend that back out with orange if I didn't like where they were. I also gave him some character. <clears throat> and colored the one foot um, with the grays and then the bottom of the other foot. So here I, I decided that the eyelids needed to be orange, so I pulled in the orange and finished that up. Now I'm not done with the stripes yet, but I just left this in because this is how I work when I'm coloring a lot of times. I will start something and let it evolve. I usually don't have a solid plan when I start, like this is going to be this color and there's going to be this many stripes. I just kind of let the coloring organically flow. But I love to get inspiration from people and places. So Marie and her husband, Chad, they were the inspiration for this. And I think he turned out fantastic, actually. He reminds me of maybe Garfield's long-lost uncle. You know, the one that they don't really talk about. <laughs> he's at some party drinking some wine. And he's like, well... <laughs> I just think that this image is super fun. Uh, there's a couple other images in this set. There's a mouse that's also holding um, a wine glass or a, I guess more of a martini glass. And then there's a, a dog and he's drawn a little bit differently. Uh, and he's got the bottle, I believe, or a big cup or something. Like, they're super cute images. And there's several sentiments um, that go with the set. And, you know, you can make them any size and you can manipulate them to kind of work together. Um, it's, it, digital images are, have become um, a really good asset for me in my craft room. I like that I can manipulate them the way I, what I, way I do. So here I had colored his eyes green. I'm adding a little bit of pink to the inside of his ears and um, to the bottom of his paws there. And then I'm going to color the 
the glass and I chose to color that so it kind of had a color to it but it was it was clear it's clear I'm coloring it clear <laughs> and then I'm going to color in the wine of course we're going to do purple or red wine for this little guy I just thought that the, the purple went better with the orange just uh they pop better and then for the bubbles what I did is pulled in one of the purples I pulled in the pink that I used and then I also pulled in that B60 that really like blue color that I used to just color them in just to uh, pull in some of the colors that are in the image so here it is all colored up and then here is the version that I have on acetate so now I'm going to walk you through making of a magic card now the first time I made a magic card was when my oldest son turned 13 he is 22 so it's been it's been a minute <laughs> um, there weren't like dies for any of this stuff then um, there you know I had to follow like a written tutorial that was in a magazine uh, but I remember making one he was very much into magic itself and I wanted to make a card that went from not colored to colored magically so what I'm doing here is cutting a panel that is going to be big enough to fit behind my image and you're not going to be able to see around it but I need it to have some little tabs at the bottom so that it doesn't pull out of my card I don't know if you've seen how magic card works but basically you have a colored image and an image on acetate and you have a you know plain piece of cardstock in between those two layers between the um, acetate piece and the colored piece and when you put it down in between there um, you just see the outline no coloring and then when you pull it up you slowly reveal the coloring that's underneath and the lines line up um, in my photo it actually doesn't look lined up but it is in real life lined up it just I don't know how the the space between the acetate and the, the image itself or maybe it was my angle or what I was doing wrong but it is it is really lined up in real life so here I'm just marking out um, my my spaces and I and I have this other piece of cardstock here that I'm just going to kind of measure so that you can see how big that they are so it's a half inch from the bottom and then it's a quarter of an inch in so there's a tab at the bottom that is a half inch deep and then the entire panel is a quarter inch um, less wide um, all the way to the bottom see I'm just going to carefully well not really carefully I'm going to quickly cut this out <laughs> um, with my exacto knife here which needs the blade replaced you can cl clearly see that so I did have to trim this up and clean up the edges with my scissors which is it's not a big deal really um, but there is my piece now that's going to slip in between the acetate piece and the colored piece and it's going to create the magic effect so for the outside frame, I decided to use this rectangle die. It was the right size. My, my entire little scene fit in there. And then I have the pull tab from a Sunny Studios set that has like a, uh, it's like a pop-up card. I do have a couple cards on my channel that are using that. So here's all my pieces, my frame, my little pull tab, my acetate, my colored piece, and then a black um, piece of cardstock for the back of my card front. So first thing is first. I needed to make sure that if I centered this guy in the middle here that um, that you were going to see him against the white and there was going to be nothing that peeked out. So I am going to um, go ahead and secure this to the frame. I did use a lot of, well I used um, tear tape or what do you call it, sook wing, double sided adhesive here. This is like eighth inch. But I also do use a lot of scotch removable tape while I'm putting this together just to hold things together while I cut things or move things or make sure they're lined up. It just was like an extra set of hands and it pulls off really nice and easy but it keeps things secured while I'm using them. So here I am putting this eighth inch tape around the opening of my frame that I created with that rectangle die and then I have the little notch at the top from that Sony Studios die. So here I uh, just take the, the stuff off. Do you ever have trouble with taking the top off of the like peel paper off of that? Sometimes, sometimes I do. So then I'm going to center him up and make sure that uh, that you can that he's centered in there. 
and I had just taped the colored piece to the background so I know that it will all fit and I'm not gonna um, I, I mean I did cut them out together but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to shift something too much and like not have it visible or have like the edge of the white card stuck visible and it would kind of ruin the whole the whole thing so here I just uh, re-taped it together with some removable adhesive. Now I know there's dyes that do all of this fancy like lining everything up, but you don't need all that really. I could have just taken um, my paper trimmer and trimmed out the rectangle and uh, could have just notched out the top or or whatever to, to make the pull tab. I just had these things, um, but I also don't have a die that would make the magic card like the actual uh, thing work, so I am going to do it the old-fashioned way. So I had just slipped that in to make sure that everything just fit. And then when I put the, the double-sided adhesive on the colored panel, I need to make sure that I bring it in just slightly on the top edges um, so that there's kind of a return there so that when I pull my little tab up that, um, that there's a stopper because otherwise uh, that, that pull tab will just pull right out and then and then the card's a one and done kind of thing. You can't reuse it. You can't push it back down and show somebody else because, well, it's done. So here I just carefully lined up the one side and then stuck in my like pull tab and then stuck the other side down. Here you can see how that works. So then I needed to stamp on the little pull tab that I have here. And this just says pull me. I think it's from a Heffy Doodle set. Uh, they, there's tons of like little interactive stamps in that set and I am loving it for little details like this because before this I would just write pull me because you know. Um, so then to make sure that you know you can get your fingers in there to pull this nicely I did put foam tape on the back of this whole entire mechanism and here you can see how it works. Isn't that cool? I think it's fantastic and I think that the digital images make things so much easier. I didn't have to worry about what kind of ink I used to, to stamp on the transparency. I didn't have to use like a stamp on a jig or a stamp platform or any of that. I, I just ran it through my printer. Um, so I decided to add glossy accents to the bubbles and the glass and you know just to give it a little bit of texture and then I decided it needed something because it was boring. <laughs> I know magic card is boring right? Um, but this grunge dots stencil from a colorful life designs it came in clutch here like it was the perfect addition to this because it's like it kind of looks like bubbles but it just adds a little something to the outside frame and um, it looks this card looks very plain you know without it's got no real embellishments on it or anything so uh, i needed something on that frame so here i'm just adding it to a top folding card base and uh I can't ever get anything straight, so I did have to trim this off. But that is my whole card. I really hope that you enjoy seeing the other creators and what they do with the stamp set. But I also hope that you enjoy um, seeing these videos every month 